Hello and welcome back to the Chaos That Is Shiny in Books. Today I'm going to actually be reviewing some recent reads. The last video got a lot more views than I thought it was going to get. Um, so thank you to anyone who is new who has come from that video. I really, really appreciate everyone who left me a really nice comment on that video, though. A lot of people were commenting on the fact that I was being pretty hard on myself about my confidence to review books or to just post online in general. And I had a lot of either comments from people or direct messages where people had told me that they felt really similar. I was hesitant to either start a booktube, start a bookstagram, or post on the one that they have um, with their thoughts on books. So it made me feel a bit better that I wasn't alone and that there's other people who are thinking the same. So today, stepping out of my comfort zone, and I'm doing it for all of us. So today I'm going to be reviewing some of my recent reads. I am still going to do it in the get ready with me style. Um, I just need something to do. <laughs> So yes, I hope that this is somewhat enjoyable. If it's not, don't worry, I'll be back with another video next week. But yes, I really, really appreciate everyone who has commented or sent me a direct message. I was really, really surprised by everyone's kind words. It was very, very nice because I was getting a little bit anxious as the views were going up on that video, I will say. I like to stay in my little comfort zone of the same people who watch and comment. Um, so yeah, if you're new, hello, welcome to the chaos and let's get into it. Get ready with me while I review books. I think I'm going to go for a pink look today. So let's talk about some romance books. I'm going to try this Kmart makeup again. Okay, so the first book that I think I'll talk about is The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This one I quite enjoyed, thankfully, because I've had a lot of problems with finding a good romance lately. This is following two characters that work at a radio station. So it is an office romance and it's kind of a spin on fake dating because they have to pretend to be exes. The radio show is doing this new segment where they have two exes giving relationship advice but none of the people that work at the station are actually exes. So the boss has the main two characters pretend that they have dated and broken up and be the two hosts of the segment, even though they never have and they don't really like each other. So yeah, I was surprised that I actually enjoyed this as much as I did. The male main character is also Asian, so it's an example of a white author having characters of colour in their story without speaking for the characters of colour, because we're hearing from the perspective of the girl. And I tend to like books more when there's something in the book that I can relate to, which I didn't think this would have at all because I know nothing about being a radio host. I would never be one. I would be terrible. I would just ramble the whole time. But there was a big segment within this book that was talking about the female main character and how she had struggled with finding her radio voice because she thought that she did not have the ideal voice for radio because prior to this radio segment, she had been working behind the scenes, not in front of the microphone. And so, yeah, she'd always been told like her voice was too annoying or shrieky for radio, which I really liked that discussion. I, like I said, have never been on radio, but my job before I took time off to have Kian was a school teacher. And I had many conversations with my um, like deputy principal, my boss that I had to report to for my grade about working on my voice because generally, not always, but the male voice is generally comes across more authoritative and sometimes female voices can come out more shrieky when we try to raise our voices. Not everyone, a lot of females have a great speaking voices, but mine in particular, I worked a lot on when I had to raise my voice to be above the noise level of the students and get their attention. I needed to do it in a way that wasn't super, super shrieky. And yeah, that was something I struggled with when I was working. So it was interesting that I found something in this book that I could relate to as well. I'm going to try this Emco Beauty. I keep seeing it everywhere. Yeah. So the X Talk was not a new favorite book, but I did enjoy it. Next up is unfortunately a book that I did not enjoy as much. In fact, I did not enjoy it at all, but this is The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. And I've enjoyed books by this author before, so I thought I would like this one, um, and unfortunately I did not. So this one is about this character who has to go to a wedding, and on the way to the wedding, she is in the car with her sister, and they crash into the car in front of them. And who is in the car in front of them? Her ex, who is also heading to the wedding, and now their car is not usable, so they all have to travel together as a group to the wedding. And now she is in the car with her sister, her ex, and the ex's best friend, who she hates. 
and they're also traveling with another guest to the wedding. And my issue with this book was that I literally hated every single character besides, I think, the sister. Everyone was annoying me, everyone was doing shitty things, so it was just really frustrating to read from. And obviously being a romance book and with her ex, it is second chance romance, which I'm coming to find that I actually don't like that trope. Okay, uh oh, I don't like that on my nose. <laughs> oh no, oh no! Don't think this lighting is doing me any favors. So the sister is a new mum, so maybe that's why I liked her a bit more than some of the other characters, but I just thought the sister was really fun, but everyone else was just so annoying. We're obviously getting chapters in present day on the way to the wedding, and we're also getting flashback chapters from when they first met and started dating the first time around. But yeah, unfortunately, I gave this one two stars and I didn't really like it, but I'm going to keep reading from Beth O'Leary because I have liked books of hers before. So I'm hoping that just because I didn't like this trope doesn't mean that, that I no longer like this author. I think I'll try her again. Next up, I'm really scared to say this one because there are so many fans of this book. Look, don't hate me if you love this book, okay? This is not me coming at you. Reading is subjective, but I actually did not like Happy Place by Emily Henry. Eee! And I know there's a lot of Emily Henry stands. I'm so, so sorry. I have liked books by Emily Henry in the past. Um, but yeah, I didn't like this one either. And at this point I was starting to think, uh oh, I've got a cold at heart. I'm not liking any romance books. What do I do? But this book is also a second chance romance and it's also friends to lovers, which I'm realizing that those are my two least favorite tropes. So this one, I'm sure you know the premise, is this group of friends that have been friends for a really long time, but one of the couples in the friendship group has broken up and the rest of the friend group doesn't know. And they go on this annual trip. So the couple decides to just pretend that they haven't broken up so that they don't like ruin the trip, ruin the vibes. Um, so they're just going to fake date and pretend that they're still dating when they're actually broken up. I do like fake dating, but I guess I just don't like second chance romance and I don't like friends to lovers. I will say that I will continue to pick up Emily Henry forever because I really love her humor and her banter in her books, but I just didn't love this one. I think just because of the tropes, um, it's really hard when you're reading romance books, but you're not rooting for the two characters to get together because it defeats the entire purpose of the romance book. And I know loads of people love, love, love this one. And they really see themselves in the characters I've seen. Lots of people love it. So I think I'm definitely the odd one out with this one. So I'm very sorry, Emily Henry fans, but I did not like this book. I will pick up from Emily Henry again, though. I think my favorite one is Book Lovers. Book Lovers and then Beach Read and then the other two. I don't know in what order. Okay, I was on Struggle Street because the next romance book that I picked up, I also didn't like. Oh, and I hate this brush which is so sad because I thought I was going to love this one. And up until like the halfway point, I was loving it. But this one is X's and O's by Amy Lee. Okay, so this one I actually was loving, like I said, up until like the halfway point. Um, this one is like a book influencer and she is trying to find love. She's recently broken up with her boyfriend and she's just a romantic. She loves romance books, but she hasn't found romance in her own life. And she ends up having to live with like her sister's husband's friend and he is a firefighter and it's a romance between them. But the premise for the story is that her grandma has told her that she ended up remarrying one of her ex lovers. So this girl is going to go through all of her exes and try and date them again to see if she can rekindle a flame from before rather than searching for a new man to date. So she's got this list of ex-boyfriends that she's going to try and reconnect with. And she's documenting this all on her Instagram, bookstagram page. And I was really enjoying this. I really actually liked the two main characters that we were following. And the premise of the story was quite funny while it was like a little bit silly, goofy and unrealistic kind of. Just the way she was documenting it on her Instagram. But it was still fun. But what I didn't end up liking about it and what made me like deduct my rating down is the way that she was really pressuring the male love interest to open up. Obviously it's important in a relationship to open up to your significant other, but you can't force people to do that. And she was doing it in a really, really forcey way. And then I wrote down on page 276, 
she was complaining about him not opening up and he gives an example of something that he did tell her. So he'd said like, oh, but I told you about blah, blah, blah. And her reply was, you already knew all my emotional trauma by then. Implying that just because she shared things with him, he has to do it in return to her. And that she was like shaming him, being like, well, I told you more. Like it's not a competition and people are not required to give you more than what they are comfortable with. If you want them to open up, then you need to be patient and wait for them to be ready to open up to you and not shame them for not opening up to you. So then that really left a sour taste in my mouth about her. But other than that, it was actually enjoyable. Um, yeah, it was just unfortunate that that had to happen and kind of like ruin, ruin how it was going for me. I'm gonna have to go quickly because my child, who you can probably hear in the background, wants to go. I was going into a bit of a romance reading slump after this train of romance books that I was not liking one after another. All right, there's the makeup done and some recent romances that I have read. Thankfully, since then, I've read more romances that I have enjoyed and I've found new favorites because I was getting concerned for a bit there. I think the pink is a little bit dramatic and the lighting is not doing the colors right, but hopefully this was somewhat enjoyable for you. And yes, thank you again to everyone who left me a very nice comment on the last video. It really, really means everything to me and to everyone else who also told me that they felt nervous about posting online as well. We're in this together. So let's all read the books that make us happy, review the books that we want to, and just all be kind to one another. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one.